<laughs> well, while you're doing that, okay. if, if this is all going to be on YouTube or no. Let's put it all on YouTube. What up, Sorry YouTube? Sorry for all the boring <laughs> stuff that we do I'm before. A, uh, yeah, you just talk to them. Um, but one of my friends is an agent. Uh, where? I always, like, get the New Orleans area mixed up, you know? What do you... Like, they're outside of New Orleans? Yeah, like all the little suburbs and... Oh, are they in Chalmette? Yeah, I'll uh, see. I don't know. Are they are they in the, on the West Bank? All the areas. Are they on the North Shore? No. Uh, um, are they in Kenner, Metairie? <laughs> I don't know. Again, YouTube, we apologize for the boring nature of these so exchanges. Boring. Meanwhile, I'm gonna just put this away. Anyway, my friend who is a realtor over in there. the New Orleans area. Her name is Dawn Morales. We could probably find her. She just recently started like being intentional with Instagram. Oh, I love it. And she's doing a really good job. Okay. And I saw she just subscribed to us on YouTube this morning. Oh, so you were like, Dawn, shout Dawn! out. Look at you, Dawn. I love it. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Oh. Made me smile. Hmm, my mom called me. I She's feel like... not in New Orleans, which is driving me crazy because I wish I could remember. You can't remember. Well, just Google Dawn Morales Realtor. Do it right now. Little hot tip, hot, hot tip for you. Google. How, how's your calculations going? Well, I'm done calculating. Dust your hand. Thank you. Yes. That's where. Okay. It wasn't coming to my brain. Well, and I, I assume, does New Orleans service that, the MLS? Let's not even get into it. I don't yeah. Know. Okay. I feel like I'm going to sniff on purpose now. I know. Like he's got me all like, like nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a Kleenex just in case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel like he's got me all nervous. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, I'm going to start your thing. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, you are? Wait. Okay, yeah. now it's going. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, as ready as I'll ever be. Not really, because my mom did just call me, and so I was concerned that she needed something. Do you but... need to call her back? No, we're going to just leave it face up, and I texted her. Okay. If it lights up, let me know. Okay. Okay. Google now automatically will say... <laughs> They're like, do you want to say something? Here like? you go. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, you are so nice and you were so kind, but you are serious. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she, just she does have boundaries. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I've sent him many emails, my friends. <laughs> He's very busy and has not yet responded. <laughs> Hi y'all, welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Hey y'all, it's Katie. Guess what time it is? It is back to school time. Agent school, that is. The doors to Agent Systems 101 are opening again on August 4th for a limited time. If you're feeling overwhelmed, overworked, or just simply confused on what to do next, this course is for you. And here are a couple of past student reviews. Amanda said, I'm absolutely loving the class. The material is awesome. When I first started real estate, it was taught you had to have systems to be successful, but no one ever discussed what they were. This course has broken it down into bite-sized pieces with a very actionable plan. Another student said, Katie has a way of simplifying buyer-seller systems to assist you with automating your business so you will have more time doing what you love. She gave me a good base to keep me organized and not guessing what the next step should be. Loved working with her. Y'all, I know you remember how it felt when you finished real estate school, you took your exam, got your license, and then you realized they didn't actually teach you how to run a real estate business. That's who this is for. <laughs> Head on over to agentsystems101.com to learn more about the course and to jump into the six-week life-changing program. I can't wait to see you there. Hello. Hey. I feel off all of a sudden. Uh, Are you on or off? I'm on. Oh, she's all the way on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's all the way up. Um, I had a miracle morning. Alyssa had a, that, and that was really not, not planned. Intentional. No. Okay. Today's episode 104. Okay. Hustling humbly. Yeah. I felt like we needed to 
go back to our basics for a little while here. We we used to always talk about in our episode, like what does hustling humbly mean to you? Yeah. And you know what I was sad about? We didn't ask our lender, Jamie, what it means to her. In our original set of guest questions. Yes. We wanted to ask that question. But I also think in our origination of the podcast, we thought there would be more guests. Right. So as there was that big space during COVID, we got out of the habit of asking them, what does Mm -hmm. hustling humbly mean to you? But during COVID, like no one was really hustling at all. And we weren't talking to them. Right. So maybe they were, but we don't know what they were doing. Sure. But I, I do have lots of good input for later about hustling humbly. Okay. Okay. So let's start with what? What do you want to start with? Hmm. You want to start with the definition of humble and hustle? Yeah. All right. To be fair, I looked up hustle and humble in the dictionary, and I didn't care for hustle's definition because it's more about like pushing along urgency, like if you're hustling. Urgency. I like that. Well, that's fine. But it doesn't... Here's the true irony. When you go look at the definition of hustle, nowhere in it does it have the meaning that you... Think of it in the entrepreneur work framework. Oh, it's not part it's not of about working at all. It's at, just at about all. hurrying. Exactly. But I, I did find mm. a good definition. Okay. From an article that Anthony Iannarino. Okay. We'll call him that. This was from uh, March of 2017. When I Googled the word hustle, this is what came up. The word hustle means that you work hard. It means you work hard every single day. It Mm. means you do the things other people won't do, and you do them with a sense of joy and purpose because you love it. (gasps) That's a beautiful definition. Agreed. I was like, Anthony, lovely. way to go. That's lovely. I know. We need to put a little quote on our Insta with that. That was really good. I was like, that's exactly what it means. In the healthy way. Right. Yes. Right. So while we're on hustle, we'll just stick with this for a minute. I, one, do not think that is a bad word. No. No, I don't either. Even when we started the podcast, it was already in this. People were down on the word hustle. There was actually an anti-hustle movement. Right. We had, we had Blake <laughs> and it's still on. still going on. I barely. The anti-hustle movement. I don't, I don't think either of us partake in the anti-hustle movement. No. We're hard workers. Yeah, we enjoy. And With we enjoy. Joy. That's right. You're doing it because you like it. And yeah. You, and you know what you need to do. But I don't think it's a bad word. So that's my personal opinion. Gary V, you know, my friend, <laughs> my personal friend, Gary V. Someone messaged me on Instagram and said, I thought Gary V was going to be episode 100. I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I've sent him many emails, my friends. He's very busy and has not yet responded. Yeah. <laughs> but he, Gary got really, um, there was this long article uh, published about him, I don't know how many years ago, about how he was championing hustle culture and, and it was bad for people and blah, blah, blah. Like he was a bad person. Mm-hmm. So he's like, because the word hustle has got everyone in an uproar, I'm now using the terminology work ethic. He said, because I do not deny <sighs> that hustle, what I was calling hustle to me was work ethic. Do you do you do your work? Right. Do you have a work ethic? Are yeah. you willing to do the work? Sure. Are you just willing to do the work? So he's changed to work ethic, and I wanted to mention that because I think it's, first of all, idiotic that a word can be so, like, polarizing. Right. It's a freaking word. It's a word. It's a word. Mm -hmm. But I like the way Anthony described it, and if you just hate the word hustle, you can just go with work ethic. Yeah. Same thing. So that's still what he uses? That's what he's using now because people basically were trying to, like, pin him into a corner. And this is the thing. He's like, people would say that I wasn't sleeping. And he was like, I'm a big sleeper. Like, at the very minimum, I'm getting six. But seven, eight, nine on the weekend, I'm for it. He's like, I like to sleep. But he said, when I'm awake, I'm on and I'm working because I love it. Right. His hobby is entrepreneurship. So when he's doing it all from morning till night, it's because it's fun. Yeah. He's having... So it's just funny to me that a word can be so... Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about hustle is yeah. boundaries are not an excuse not to do the work. Right. So <laughs> so I know we talk about boundaries a lot. Yes. But that's not an excuse to be like, oh, I don't answer my phone because of boundaries. Now, I think I've shared this before. Okay. But I had a client that I went to her house and she was interviewing a few agents. Okay. 
And she selected me. Okay. And I was like, great, that's wonderful. <laughs> For, terrific. Um, And so she called me three days later and said, hey, Alyssa, you know, I was really anxious about this process. That's why I wanted to interview multiple agents. And my son just bought a house with a realtor and they just moved in. And um, I was over there Friday night and the agent was there helping them like move in and oh. do all these things. I know. And she asked me who my agent was. And I said, my agent is Alyssa Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, wow, Alyssa's a great agent, you know, but, but, you know, she just, she does have boundaries. <laughs> like, okay. I was, and I, call, and, I and then this she coming, calls. This coming from the agent who was in the middle of helping them Friday move. Friday night. Friday <laughs> night. Okay. And I said, this is too much for me right now. I haven't told you this. No. Oh, my gosh. She was like, uh, bad news. She has boundaries. Oh, Lisa has <laughs> boundaries. And I said, um, how did that make you feel? Okay. Are you upset about this? And she said, well, she just kind of mentioned that there may be times when, you know, you don't answer your phone. Yeah. And I said, okay, well. We've been in communication for about two weeks. Have you have felt you had any issues? Well, no. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, do you at your job, do you have boundaries? Well, yes. Okay. I said, okay. And she said, I mean, I work at a church. And I said, okay. So does do they call you at 10 o'clock at night? Well, no. Well, shoot. That's <laughs> what they do in real estate. I know. I said, okay. I said, well, look. I have kids. Um, if I ever miss your call, I'll call you back. Um, I do try to let family time be family time. And at the end of it, she goes, I feel really good about this. Oh, great. I said, thank you. I said, I actually, when you said that, wanted to say, well, thank you. Right. That's a compliment. That's great. That's a huge compliment. Whereas this other agent was like, oh, be careful. She's got she, boundaries. She's got boundaries. Oh, my word. But it really just... <laughs> and she said, you know, now that I think about it, it's really weird that she was there Friday night helping them thank move. Thank you. And I went... No boundaries. No boundaries. I said, I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> this is hilarious. But I, <laughs> I just was going to let you have that revelation on your own. You know, right. I said, I run myself. And she said, you know, the way you're doing it is really very professional. Hello. It's Thank a freaking you. business. Thank you. Right. Can you believe that? Hardly. Uh, yeah. But I mean, you couldn't have made that up. No. I, <laughs> I was just like. I would have almost laughed if what? someone said that to me. I know. You're like, oh my. Yeah. Is it, is this going to be a problem? Yeah. Because you're right. I, I well, I was prepared to say. If, if me returning phone calls later, if I miss you, or me not being available, you know, a couple hours a day is a deal breaker, it's a deal breaker for me too. That's fine. We can't be, we, we won't can't be, be able client. to work together. Yeah. So it just is what it is. But oh by the God. end of the conversation, she was, it's almost like she had to talk it out. She was like, I want to understand. She wanted to understand why that had a negative yes. connotation. Yes. Like she called me confused. Like she said, you know, to be careful. <laughs> Because you have boundaries. I find this to be hilarious. Yes. I, I mean, because it's not a negative thing to have boundaries, but it is a negative thing to use your boundaries as a means by which you don't actually do the work. Sure. Like you said, yes, you're right. I won't answer your call at 10 p.m., but I will call you back tomorrow. Right. Or whenever I can. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. It will all get done in, in the time frame that it is supposed to be done in. Right. Yes. Oh, my word. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. Love it. Do you Crazy. want to hear humble? Yeah. Okay. So the definition for humble, I felt, was more what I was expecting that made sense with this. This is just a regular old definition from the dictionary. Okay. Having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. I like that too. There are several definitions of humble, just like there are several of hustle in the dictionary. I just picked the one that made the most sense. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Like... Uh, I think when we talk about being humble on the show, part of it too is not um, leaning into that industry standard of look at me. Yes. I am here yes. with my client and look at my, you know, 
car and my awards and yes. my big sold banner <laughs> <laughs> with my big face with my huge face i also <laughs> want to talk about not for long but i crack up i i don't really understand do you ever see people's for sale signs with the full and if you have this i'm not do your thing the, their full body oh yeah it's on the for sale the side whole body. Not, not even just their head like the whole thing and yeah. i'm like wow okay Wow. It's interesting. Yeah. Look at my shoes. Right. <laughs> check out my outfit. Yeah. It's yeah. It's more like a check out my outfit. Right. Right. Look at right. my outfit. Yeah. So funny. Um, okay. Tell me your thoughts on being humble. <sighs> Are you ready for some podcast therapy? Please. Let's hear it. I will admit that I go through phases of struggling with humility. Okay. From a standpoint of judging others that maybe are not running their business how they should. Okay. Like, I feel like sometimes if you're the other agent working with me, uh -huh. I have a very low tolerance right. for you being unorganized. Okay. And it makes me feel like I'm better okay. because I have systems and yeah. boundaries and you are aggravating them <laughs> and you're because, making me annoyed because you're you're calling me and texting me and all hours of the night and day right and you're you're unorganized and you drop the ball and it's affecting me right whereas i should humble myself and stay in my own lane yeah and just do my thing right. and kindly and respectfully just give them what they need. Yes. Like, I think that's good. I sh like, you yeah. don't need to give them a lecture. Just, right. Just give them the <laughs> and stuff. And I don't. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't lecture my peers. You're just, except you're on just the in your mind. You're, you're like annoyed about it. <laughs> yeah. And, but also maybe I could be nicer. Like, I hate, if, if they email me, I might send back, okay. <laughs> okay, whereas you are so good at just always being I would like above to cut and in beyond here and say, yes, I and am I am fluffy wonderful. with my words. Thank you. Have a great day. I'll Happy get that to, do to you it. shortly. Coming, Happy to do it. Coming, coming your way. Yeah. Okay. I need to be better about saying happy to do it. Okay, well, you can add that in, but I would like to state you really are starting to paint yourself as this really, like, <laughs> not nice, stern person. You are, like, the nicest person. You're not in any way mean or you're no. just dry in your email yeah. communication. I am dry. And I think it is more professional and um, efficient. Yeah. You're very efficient. Yeah. But I, even when people ask me before we were this deep in the podcast, like when we were just kind of friends, like, how does she do it? Or what does she do? Or she does all these transactions. I'm like, she's nice. No, a number one, nice. And then number two, she's working hard. So I please do not make people on the podcast think that you're like this mean. I'm really meanie. hard on myself. You're, you are. You're being <laughs> mean to yourself. You're fine. But I think that. I wish though that. Instead of feeling frustrated towards them, I would feel like compassionate towards okay, them. Okay, well, this you can do this. I'm working on it. Okay, I love it. I'm working on this it right is, now. This is the therapy. You know, it's yes. So I'm here to say <laughs> I'm working on this. That sometimes I get frustrated when, like, if it's an agent that's not running their business like a business and it affects me. Right. And I should want to be helpful and be the example that shows that's them, right but look that's all hey, you have to do yeah be the, example, be the example do it nicely your business you know way right with your <laughs> professional standards you know what has really helped me let me hear so it. like if someone emails me hey i need the addendum i usually just reply okay. with the addendum right attached in the email okay Google now automatically will say, <laughs> they're like, do you want to say something? Here like? you go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me Google is adding fluff for yes. you? <laughs> no, it really is. Do, do you like Gmail? Yeah. Yes. It gives you at the like, bottom. It's like, here you go. Or it says like a lender emailed me yeah. and it, it just said, just wanted to let all parties know that this is on track. Well, I usually just delete that email. Right. And Google was like, click here to put. Yes. Great. Thanks Thank for the you. update. 
So, I, so you did it? I clicked. Thank God. And it said, Google to the rescue. Great. Thanks for the update. <laughs> and I was like, man, that was so nice. This is hilarious because typically the <laughs> auto response that it gives me, I'm like, that's not enough. <laughs> like, I need more. I need more fluff. I'm like, okay, fine. But I've also got to say, have a great day. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I know. That's so funny. Um, but I was listening to Joyce Meyer. Okay. I love Joyce Meyer. I don't she, think I know Joyce Meyer. She's good. Okay. Um, what is she? What does she do? She is a... Christian preacher, but she's kind of dry. Okay. <laughs> but very direct. Okay. And to the point. Okay. And it's like, you know, being a Christian doesn't mean that you're a weenie. Okay. okay. Like she's just. She, okay. But she had this whole uh, sermon on humility. Okay. And I think what I just was talking about, um, she was saying that to be humble, the key to being humble is that you cannot expect it. Being humble is about. Focusing on yourself. You. Yes. Yeah. And not focusing on other people. Right. Which is where I was struggling sometimes. Okay. Because I'm kind of like, if I can do it, you can do it, you know? Right. But maybe they can't, Alyssa. But maybe they can't. But <laughs> she's saying... <laughs> you don't sound convinced. I know. I know. All right. Tell us what she said. Um, She's saying, like, if you are someone that is passionate about justice... Okay. Don't be looking for justice. Oh. Be the justice. Go, okay. So, like, if you feel like there's a wrong that needs okay. to be righted, mm -hmm. don't be looking like, who's going to do something? Because all it's going to do is frustrate you. Oh, you need who's to gonna take action. This? Yes. Whereas the the point of humility is saying, this frustrates me. I'm going to operate this way. Fair. Just change you. Just change you. Just change you. Yes. You don't, don't be worried about other people. But that's exactly what it, the whole thing is. The people who are worried about others' perceptions, worried about others' like view of them, worried about likes and comments and you know vanity metrics, those are the ones that need to say, "I sold one million houses this year." You yeah, know what I mean, like that's all the same thing. Yeah, just be worried about you. Worry about yourself. Right. Worry about yourself. And through that, it inspires others. You agree. And I think that is why I was getting burnt out on even coffee dates. Yeah. Because I loved like meeting with all the people right. and doing that. But then I would get frustrated when they didn't want to actually implement. If they don't listen. Yeah. They didn't want to <laughs> implement anything. But that's why I have enjoyed the podcast because I love hearing people's success stories. Right. And how... They are the agents that are making other agents' lives easier. Right. And they are the agents that the public wants to work with. And they, right. And then they come back and tell you, thank you. This is what I implemented. Yeah. The nice thing is that no one comes back and you have no clue about <laughs> who they are. So you're not like, ugh, right. I told you not <laughs> right. to do that. I told you what to do. Why didn't you do it? And yeah. the coffee date was so intimate that you knew who it was and you saw like what what came out of it. And yeah. so this is more anonymous. So it's a little easier to like. Yeah. But I think it's good, you know, to, you, you have to check yourself, especially when you're doing the volume. Yeah. Because I know that when I do the volume, it's always trying to keep the humility and I'm an Enneagram three. So I care what people think. Right. That's a, just a natural. And even though I'm not flashy and like how I dress and what I drive. Right. I do care about, other people's perceptions. Uh, yes. And so humility is sometimes, it's something that co I constantly have to check. Yeah, I think that's but okay. But Joyce was saying too that um, humility is not the natural oh. human instinct. Yes. Pride is the natural human instinct. Okay. Like it's natural for humans to err on the side of prideful. Okay. And, you know, think about yourself and put yourself first. Well, you're trying and, to keep yourself alive. Yeah. Put yourself out there. And yeah. yeah, exactly. Like that's just human nature. Right. It's not as much of human nature to take a back seat, take a back seat for sure. Okay. And, and that made me feel better because it's like, well, you never reach right. always just being this hum humble. And it, look, it, it is, but that's the whole point of the whole show. Hustle versus humbly and like prideful versus hu humility. Like, yeah. It's not that it, we're celebrating people's wins, but we're also telling you not to like be so mm -hmm. braggy about everything. Right, right. Like it's or you're we're not saying you shouldn't celebrate your wins. We're yes. not saying you shouldn't be proud of yourself that you accomplished your goal or your, you know, big sale or whatever it is. All it's, good things. Right. Moderation. 
an example on that okay. would be I have a seller who is working on getting their house ready okay. to sell. And he messaged me and was like, hey, Alyssa, I actually was contacted by someone at the ABC group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And I think that they might have a buyer. Oh, my gosh. And I'm thinking, first of all, they don't have a buyer. How did they find him? I, I don't know. So I said, well, I am familiar with the ABC group. Do you know who on that team it was? Right. He said, sure. I have the contact information. So he sends me the contact information, and it's this big photo. It's like a flyer, okay? Okay. like Of a guy. Like they dropped it at his house? Yes. Okay. Of a guy... An, a young guy I've never seen before. Okay. I never heard his name. Okay. But I have heard of the, the team. Okay. And it says, hi, I'm whatever my name is. Make him a name, Alyssa. Uh, I'm Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I sold $55 million in real estate last year. Benjamin, you don't say. Benjamin. Yeah. And I am just like, what is actually happening here? And I said, okay, did you just get this at your house or did they actually- Like, how did you get this? Did they actually contact you? Because if it was just a mass mail out, I don't really care. Right, like right. It, he said, no, He act, someone actually came and, and put it on my front door with a handwritten note. Okay. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of effort. Benjamin has Benjamin. a lot of time for $55 million in sales. Yeah. So I called Benjamin. Okay. I said, hey, Benjamin, uh, my seller on Main Street mm -hmm. said that he thinks that you came by his house and that you mentioned that you have a buyer. But but you don't, don't you? So I just wanted to check. I'm his agent. So <laughs> I would love just to hear about your buyer. I would love to show it to your buyer. You to show it to your buyer. Would you like to see? Oh, yeah. I don't. I, which house was this? I don't have a clue because I put one every door. Yeah. <laughs> he said, no, I don't have a buyer. Um, You know, we're just trying. He's like, you know. I'm like, you <laughs> lied? <laughs> <laughs> Did you lied in your marketing? You lied about having a buyer and these sales numbers are not accurate to the public. And what did, did you tell him that? I no. said, I said, so you do not have a buyer. Just to be clear. And he said, no, I do not have a buyer. I did not mention anything about the you were like, Bye. deception Bye, Benji. of the other stats the deception. on the said, said flyer. But it just goes to show oh. that it is. it makes the public go, wow, right. this is... Should, here's the other thing. Your seller could have just contacted Benjamin. Yes. And I dumped lost, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that's the whole thing about the rule, and I don't know if this is a nationwide rule or if it's an ethics rule or if it's a our local board rule, but you're not supposed to go behind the sign and advertise. Right. Which technically that wasn't because your sign wasn't up right, yet. Right, right. Yeah, we're I mean, working on it. But, like, how do they... How do they know? Your sellers don't know and your buyers yeah, don't know. Yeah, I definitely know. could have lost the listing. Yeah. We're in the process and every uh, marketplace is different. Yeah. So I would even be curious just to know how other MLSs do it. Our MLS right now, say that Alyssa Jenkins has a team okay. of 10. Right. If you look up Alyssa Jenkins in MLS, it might say mm -hmm. 40 million. Right, because all the team is under you. Right, but it doesn't say the Alyssa Jenkins team. No. It just says Alyssa, Alyssa Jenkins. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we are in the process right now uh -huh. in our MLS system of making it be labeled correctly simply because we want to be transparent. We're not here as agents to trick anyone. We're not trying to trick the public and right. say, we are so great. Look at these inflated numbers. Right. Look, look at, at these. Look at these numbers. Look at these numbers, numbers, but numbers. you know what else I think, and this is a total side note, for the team members, I hate that for them. I know. Because when they go off on their own, it looks like they haven't done anything. Right. Or like that all belonged to the team. Right. And they did the work. Exactly. They had the experience. Yes. So how do you prove that you have that experience? I mean, I guess there are ways to do it. You could just mm -hmm. be like, I was on a team with X production or whatever. Sure. But it just is annoying. It's annoying on the MLS for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I have had clients ask to see sales numbers. Um, I have a client that was a lender for a long time. Yeah. So they just knew the right things to ask for. Right. And he was like, do you mind sending me your MLS numbers? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And I did. And like, I was like, number did he ask if you were a team? No, <laughs> I think he probably, I probably knew I wasn't, but, um, you know, it, it was interesting because it was like, I'm number 12. And then if you look, it's like other people's names, but they're teams. They're all teams. And I just wanted to 
Did you clarify? Base? I so, said, I just want to let you know, I am a solo agent. The other ones on here are teams um, or represent like a subdivision of builders or something. Um, but because I don't want them to say, well, why am I going with number? I mean, to be number one is... Nobody wants no, number one. How can you be number one? No. As a solo. No. Like, but um, I didn't want him to think, well, maybe I should interview these other 12. Yeah, but... Yeah, and they No didn't. one's going to do that. Care. But it, it would be nice to have clarification. Just, I think it's important to be transparent. Hello, friends. We are so excited that so many of you are using the template course and the reviews are just pouring in, letting us know that it has helped your business as much as it has helped our business. Yes. Listen to this review. Thank you so much for providing this wealth of information, knowledge, and template form. So far, I've used a handful and received positive feedback like, this is so professional, or I really appreciate how organized you are. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, Your clients are actually there. gonna say that. Yes. All right, here's another one. Thank you so much for this. I can't tell you how many times I've started this and how many notebooks of samples and notes I had. <laughs> I have ADHD and it is super hard to stay focused on getting it done. Having it all in one place is gonna make it so nice. That is what we're here for. I know, just look, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just yeah. use these. Yeah, nice and simple, easy, ready to go, ready for you to put your own logo on, make it sound like you. So head over to Hustle Humbly podcast.com slash course slash course and check it out that's right and you're going to enjoy them you're going to love them you're going to love it change your life literally fired <laughs> my assistant they are the best <laughs> okay, enjoy the template yes enjoy well you know what's funny when i was at remax you know they release stats which is part of why i like not being there anymore they release stats every month yeah in the state and they always break it out team stats individual stats like you don't they're not now they are interwoven if they want like the total whatever sure. but they break them apart okay. oh you're in the top 50 of individuals you're in the top 50 of teams it is oh, not yeah. the same freaking thing no it's not the same it's not the same thing no but also who cares well i think that the agents that are super super numbers focused I, yeah can be the ones that are lacking a little bit. Not all the time. It's not a blanket statement. Okay. But I will say on this guy's card that he <laughs> left, all it said was, I sold this. I sold this many houses. This was my list to sale price ratio. This was my production. Blah, blah. It said nothing about... I will help you stage. I will be there for you. Yeah, what are I my will services? Be your point. No, just numbers. Nothing about yeah. like what the relationship will be, how the process goes. But you know, and it's misleading to the public because the public's just like, oh, well, you must be really good at customer service if you've done all these deals. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> or you must be really good at yeah whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just think it's important. Numbers are good. It's a tool that should be used. Yeah, let's go back to humble beginnings. Please, let's. When we had no numbers. <laughs> right. How were we surviving, Katie? How does one survive without saying that you did 55 million in sales? I well, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you one of the things I did very early on. Every time someone said something nice about me in an email or a I mean, they were not official testimonials, but I would put their quote on my piece of paper that said past client testimonials. Yeah. And it would be like Miss Irma from the sixty thousand dollar house said, <laughs> "Katie, you are this is this is for real. I should go find it." But it was basically this: "Katie, you are so nice and you were so kind, but you are serious." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Irma, you are right." I love that. But I would just would, you anytime serious. someone emailed me, "Thank you, you've been so helpful for this transaction." I would put it on the list. Put it on the list because it That's did it. A great idea. It didn't matter to me or my clients what my number was. What they want to know is how will you treat me during this transaction? And if they care about numbers, fine. Go yeah. find a better, you know, a, a more experienced agent now. Now that I'm 15 years in, I have numbers and the and the words. I got sure. it both. Yeah, but. I wanted to, when we were talking about, I was like, let's talk about our humble beginnings. <laughs> we have a lot of new agent listeners. Yes. Last week's episode was New Agent 101. Yes. I think this is a great follow-up to that because part of hustling and being humble is the beginning isn't all 
Glamour. Right. It's not all Mm -hmm. the best price range to work in, the best neighborhoods, the, you know, I get to do like, you know, beat all the boundaries. Like when you start, you're humble and you hustle or else you fail. Right. So in the beginning, year one, I did 16 transactions. That's good. I think, look, it's above average regardless. That's really good. Right? 16 transactions. But here's where it gets fun. They ranged... From sales price sixty thousand okay. dollars to the high of one hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars. I did not even break two hundred thousand dollar list price oh or my sales gosh. price. The so the average for my sixteen transactions was a hundred and twenty nine thousand three hundred and fifty six. That's the amazing. average. Mm. I worked with lots of first time buyers. Yeah. I worked with listings that my in scary parts of town that I my know. broker was like, Hey, you wanna try these? And I'm like Okay, I'll try. I'll do it. And I did it. And then, so my average commission checks were $2,582. That's not terrible. It's not horrible. <laughs> it's a it's a living. Yeah, I paid for my dues and lived. Yeah. Uh, but it's not fancy. No. I did four sellers, 12 buyers. That's really good. And I'll tell you where they came from. Okay. Five online leads. Okay. Because I was way early to that scene. Yeah. I don't. I don't get on that scene now, but back in the beginning, Mm -hmm. five personal, so people who I knew, Yeah. four referrals, like from my broker or whoever, and then five phone duty calls. Wow. Because I was in a small office at that point and and I was able to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us about your humble, humble beginnings. (laughs) My first sale was $99,000. Okay. And it took a long time (laughs) to find a house. That worked for a hundred grand. Yeah. Now it would be impossible, but mm. back in 2012, you could. I, I found I, one. Well, that's the funny thing too. Now it would be impossible for me to do 16 deals under 200,000. No, that's impossible. Mm, probably not. Pretty so much easy. impossible. And like these houses were cute. Yeah, it was fine. Um, it's funny because I'm looking at one that I sold on Willow Trail for 190, mm-hmm. and Willow Trail right now is like 250. Yeah, like you cannot. Right. It's totally different. It's just, but even still, whatever the bottom of the market is, that's where you freaking start. Yeah. You don't get to start at the top of the market. Well, I mean, I guess you could, Mm -hmm. but go on. Um, one of, okay. So 99,000 and my check was, you know, pretty sad after my, (laughs) after your split, after my split. Yeah. I have taxes taken out all that. I was like, okay. So then I was like, it's okay. I can only go up from here. You're right. And then my second sale was $9,500. You were like, that's way down. That's way, way down. I don't even know where it is. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it and I remember. You can't picture the location. Right. (laughs) Because (laughs) you blocked it out of your memory. I was on phone duty. Oh my! And oh, I remember this story. Called. And you're like, and okay. I was like, she sounds normal and nice and real. She sounds like a real person that wants to see. This I better house. go. I'm gonna go right now. And I jumped in the car and put in the address, and it said 45 minutes. You're like, I'm sorry, I won't be I, there. Yes, I won't be there in 20 minutes. I'll be there in 45 minutes. And I drove and I drove and I drove. Just somewhere out into the middle of nowhere. Somewhere down River Road forever. Wow. I can't even tell you what city this was in. Oh okay? my word. And I get there. And it is a shack. Fair. It was $9,500. And she was like, I'll take it. And she wanted it. So then I drove all the way back to the office. And then I realized it was a foreclosure. I didn't check any of that before because, you know, I didn't do that in the beginning because I didn't know how. I didn't know. You were popped on. And it was like, please include the attached addendum with all offers. It was like 43 pages. Oh, God. And look, did you? Yeah. There was no E sign. No. (laughs) So then I had to drive 45 minutes to go meet her to get it all signed. Uh-uh, and like, uh-uh. we had to read everything and figure it out together. You were like, it I was don't know a, what this my is. My check was about $325. <laughs> uh-huh. And it took like two months. And an hour and a half to to oh, both directions just to hours. go. Hours. Right. So you went several times. Several times I went back. Yeah. I wanted to be like... Can you just shake the door really hard? I'm sure it'll come off and you can get in there without right, me. Right. <laughs> you really don't need me to come open no, it for but you. you Do you? Because that's hustling. It was hustling. Um, oh, it's yeah. just funny looking at that. And then um, one of my higher sales that year was 377 Ooh. She was off of phone duty. Okay. And I was so excited yeah. and nervous because right. I was 22 
21 and I looked like I was 15. Right. And this lady was like a really, she worked for, for a big insurance company and like I was just like, You're oh like, my gosh, oh, I need no. to step up my game. Right. So I put on my, did you wear a blazer? My blazer. <laughs> and I really <laughs> dressed the part to You're show like, I up. I can do this. So we had shown the house that she bought and we are standing in the driveway just discussing it and this lady comes by walking her dog and she's like oh my gosh are you are you gonna are you the buyer and she's like I think I'm gonna be the buyer and you know we're discussing that now and she's like oh my gosh you're gonna love this subdivision you know is this your daughter oh and I'm like snap oh man no I hope that's I was like no I, I'm the realtor <laughs> 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 but I was, so, I was, oh my God. inside, I was dead. Dying. You died. You were yes. dead. I was embarrassed. And then I think she was embarrassed. She was like, oh God. Do I look what old? What have I done? Yeah. I'm like, what? I was just embarrassing. And, oh my God. And then I had one other higher sale. I had two higher sales my first year. One was that one from phone duty. The other one was my grandfather. Oh, well, fair. He should use you. Well, he, he didn't had, want to. He, he didn't you. want to. And, you know, I feel like you've told the story. I, I have. And he said, Alyssa, I've had an agent that I've used my whole life. And you, I will give you like four months. And, you know, if you can't do it, I'm, I'm calling her. Okay. And I said, okay. I will do my best. I'll do my best. Oh, you and can we do. did it. Hooray. He was okay. proud. Yeah. Good old beginnings. Oh, my God. Um, I think that. There's a difference between humility then, because it was real humble, yeah, and humility now, yeah, which is more like keeping in mind you need to be humble. Yes, uh, humility then is look. I knew I was new. I didn't pretend not to be new. Like right. I knew. Right. Um, and sometimes that meant, you know what? If my friend didn't use me, yes, I feel sad and rejected, but maybe they're a little nervous and it's yeah. okay. I'm new. Like maybe mm -hmm. they're not comfortable with me yet. I think also being humble in the beginning is asking for help. Yes. Trying to learn, shadowing another agent. Mm -hmm. I do not think it is okay for you as a brand new agent to be like, I got this. I went to real estate school. I'm yeah. out. I'm going to go gonna show send out this postcard with 55 million on it with my photo. I'm going. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow all the tactics. No, you need to shadow an agent on a showing. Go to you, classes. Get training. Are you training? Do you know what the purchase agreement says? Okay. Bless. I am not going to call out and she'll laugh when she hears this. There is another agent that I know who has gotten her license in the last five years. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, I'm going to need you to help me uh, measure a house. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I've never done it before. I'm like, I'm sorry. They don't make you do that in your post-licensing class anymore. And she's like, no, I did it all online. I'm like, <laughs> wait, back it up, back it up. Uh, Katie had to go out on the freaking hot sun and walk around the board of realtors and measure it with a freaking real life tape yeah, measure. That's what I had to and do. And write too. it down on a piece of graph paper and then figure out the freaking math. Yeah. No, man. Never done that. They don't do that anymore. Nope. I was like, okay, well, yes, I'm happy to assist you with this, but I am also appalled. And like, this is why <laughs> I'm appalled. This is why online learning is only good to a point. Right. Oh man. Like you got to get there in person and actually understand how do you physically do this? Yeah. I mean, I guess they could show you a video on the online, but either way I was like, whoa. Um, so shadow someone for yeah. heaven's sakes. If you've never measured a Real house life experience. and you need help, then Open find houses someone. are great because you just get face to face with real people. But I still think people. you should go to an open house with another agent before sure. you go host your open house. Sure. You'll also feel a lot more confident. Yes. If you've seen someone do it and realize it's not that difficult. <laughs> it would have gone a lot better <laughs> if I would have done that. Like shadow someone. Yeah, I jumped straight in. You're like, I'll just do now, this. Now, I will say by the fourth one, I was... Well, right. I was pretty We've good. We've learned. We know what the to do. The first four... You know, I knew my yeah. name and that was all. Oh I knew nothing gosh. about anything, but I learned like what people ask, what's yep. important to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So humility to me, that's the same now <laughs> as it was then. Sometimes I've got to get the broom out and sweep. Yeah. Sometimes I have to dust the door. Yeah. Sometimes I have to shoo the dog away for the photo. Like, you do the work, right? You just got to show up and there. I'm not like I'm digging my sign out of the muddy hole. Like, 
Yeah. I'm, you're not too good to get dirty, right? Ever. You know what I'm doing this week? Oh my God, what? My sweet sellers like totally moved out <laughs> yes. and moved to Tennessee. Okay. And they forgot one closet. <gasps> The whole the thing? Whole, the house is totally empty. Oh, my God. And there is one closet, and they are the sweetest people. And he was like, Alyssa, I don't really know who else to call. Do you have someone that can do that? And then what, ship it to them? He said they're coming back through here okay. um, in, like, two months. So you're going to hold on to it? Yeah. I'm That's... going and... Boxing you're the only up one. The closet. I mean, I thought I could try to pay someone. <laughs> Who could I pay? Well, the home organizer the the will day, do it. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's like I'll just do it. Yeah, it. it just I thought about calling. I kind of felt out my assistant a little, and she, she was like, "No, thank you." Yeah. <laughs> she's like, "No, thank you." I was like, "Yeah, it, it's like I'll go." I'll okay, just, I'll go do it. Well, if you decide you need some <laughs> assistance, I have a good home organizer that will be ha- more than happy to I am a that. big advocate of paying someone to do something. Yeah. Okay, if I can. You know, there are... I truly value time versus money and looking at that yeah. and all of that. Yes. But this was just an oddity. It kind of stumped me because like, it was such a random task. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I thought I could... I can do that. I mean, look, I've taken people's trash out. Yeah. Many times. Mm-hmm. I've rolled trash cans up from the street many times. Yeah. Like, this this stuff does not even phase me. But you're never too good to do that work. Right. For your seller, for your buyer, whoever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Hustle, hustle in the beginning, though, is different than hustle now, right? Oh, yeah. Hustle in the beginning is work all the time. Hustle in the beginning is figuring out how your business is going to work, what you're you're figuring out what you're capable of, what your family needs, what your boundaries are. And then even then like boundaries change, like you know how I am pretty much unavailable from 4 to 7. Yeah. Um until the kids go to bed and then I kind of catch up before I shut it down. It that changes though. Right. So you're really just trying to figure out what works. Well, we were were both without children when we started. Yes. Lots of our listeners and lots of new agents are already In parents. That, yeah. Like they already have children. So I think it's different. Mm-hmm. You would have had to have some boundaries and some different sooner, which I think yeah. would have been good. Yeah, because you get in the habit of it. Yes. And then you treat it more professionally. I will tell you in the beginning, I drove literally all over. Oh, yeah. I had no geographical boundaries other than it had to be in our MLS, which y'all could be an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with that area. I don't work there consistently. I'm going to refer this out. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I'm, yes, I can go sell a house in New Orleans, but to what end? Sure. Like, my poor clients are going to get an agent that never sells anything there. Mm -hmm. How am I going to have any you know, basis of knowledge. And I've referred out some big business in New Orleans. Well, to me, that's humbling. Well, I can't know it all enough to say that's not, this is not my area. Yeah. And as much as I want the sale, I can't handle it. I do the same thing with commercial leads. Yeah. I've, I have closed a commercial deal before, not a sale, but a lease. And that's just as difficult. And then I'm like, why am I doing this? This is not my specialty. I don't know what I'm doing. The other agent is annoyed because they have to answer all my questions that I should know. And I'm yeah. like, I'll just refer this out to where they get my clients who came to me get a professional experience from someone who is an expert in that area or that field. Sure. Well, I don't need to do all that. Um, I'll tell you hustle now also is answering your phone. Yes. We say this many times. Mm-hmm. But... I'm not too good to answer the telephone. Right. Within appropriate hours. Yeah. Like, I mean, answer the freaking phone. Yeah. See who it is. Who is that? Who is this? Who is this? How can I help you? (laughs) Um, Okay. Any other thoughts about your humble beginnings? Hmm. How did you get your early business? Phone duty. Mm -hmm. Open house. Mm -hmm. um, Going to... Uh, I think I've talked about this before, but my broker told me you need to pick two organizations that you volunteer for. Oh, right. Like you need to just go be Do out that. there with the people. Mm-hmm. Don't be sitting in the office Don't. all day. Go You're be not with the people. You're not going to meet anyone. You need to go and get your face out there and get your name on some rosters and handwrite some letters. I yeah. cannot tell you how many letters I you wrote. wrote with your hand. Okay. I do want to share a story. Oh, let's hear it. Um, it was year two. Okay. I was a newlywed. Okay. Still struggling to figure out 
just my daily routine, right. my actual system. Yeah. And um, I had, we had just gotten back from our honeymoon. I am like officially like moved in to the house and he gets up and leaves and goes to work. And you're like, whoa. And I'm like, okay, what do I Bye. do? You know? And I just kind of went through a slump. Yeah, you're because like, um, I didn't know what to do. You, right. I was overwhelmed. I felt like I didn't really have business. And our yard And you were guy, at this point doing it full time. Yes. Okay. And I think the year before I was in grad school. Oh, while you had two things real estate. Go. And were you still bartending then? I was. You had a lot of I was of very busy. Very but busy. But that kept me energized. Yeah. Well, I graduated. I quit the bartending job. And now it's just a free for all. And I was like, just I gonna do having all trouble in, the tra- in that transition. And I was actually like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. What is? What am I going to even tell him I do all day? You know? Right. When, when he gets home from work, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. be like, uh, I'm still here in my pajamas. What's up? <laughs> So I'm sitting on the couch, sulking, wondering what my life is going to be like. And there's a knock at the door. Uh huh. And I'm like, okay, okay. I look terrible. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. <gasps> Stop. What's this happening? is hilarious. So I look, and it's the guy that cuts the grass. Okay. And I'm like, okay. Tanner usually leaves the check under the mat. Maybe he. What do you didn't. need me for? Yeah. Why? Why? I don't want to answer. I don't want you to see me. So I answered, and like legit pretended to be sick, like homesick. Like, like oh, uh, hey, I'm not I'm feeling sorry, well. Sorry, don't I'm don't let me breathe today. on you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so nervous. Okay, this young, sweet guy. And he goes, hey, um, I said, was the check not a- Oh, no, I got the check. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I have some openings. And if you refer any of your neighbors to me, I'd be happy to give you a free grass cut. And I was just like, yes, I will. Oh, you're Okay. Look at you. Like, it just melted You were like, this me. guy's, I this guy's hustling. It. I just thought for some reason it was just the sweetest thing. And it really, like, struck a nerve with me. And I went, oh, yeah, like, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Right. And um, he was like, uh, okay, thanks. Well, here's a few of my cards. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, thank you. Oh, my God. And I shut the door. And I literally was just like light bulb moment. You were like, I can do this. That is what people want. You do not have to show up in a suit and a resume that has all these fancy numbers. Right. That's why people have been blowing up our emails asking about this handwritten letter. Oh, God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Please address it again because they're asking me what episode it's in. I'm like, I don't freaking know. We don't know. remember. We don't remember. I don't know. But but people are like, well, isn't it negative to say that you, because I said, one of my letters that I sent out said, hey, I just wanted to reach out. It's halfway through the year. I had set some pretty big goals. I haven't quite reached the goal. And if the, if you know anyone looking to buy right. or sell, please send them my way. Yeah. I promise to treat them like family and do a great job for them. Thank you so much. Here's some cards. That's what the letter said. Now they need to go back and listen to that on, on slow, slow motion. Speed. It says, I have big goals. <laughs> I have not quite met those goals yet. Um, so if you know anyone looking to buy or sell, please send them my way. I will do a great job for them. And treat them like family. Treat them like family. Thank you so much. Here's a few cards. See and goodbye. That's all it said. And I have written that letter. I would bet. At least a thousand times. Holy Not an exaggeration. S- like, wow. I truly believe in my heart I have written that letter at least a thousand times. And it's because I think, one, it tells people I'm not too busy. Right. Guess what? I actually maybe am behind on my goal. Yeah. Or I'm open to new business. Right. Right, right, right. Two, I'm going to work hard. Yeah. It makes people just like how that guy, when he asked me for help. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to help. I want to help you. I want to help People you. People love being helpful. Yeah. yeah. Even if I would, I'm not a big phone caller. Yeah. I don't like to pick up the phone and cold call and mm-hmm. ask for leads. Yeah. But I truly think I could pick up the phone and call a handful of past clients and check on them and say, hey, so, you know, with inventory being so low right now, yeah. I'm actually kind of behind where I usually am. If you know anyone looking to buy or sell, we send them my way. Preferably sell. Yeah. <laughs> and they would say... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And thanks so much. Hey, I hope you have a great day. The end. Yeah. It doesn't feel sleazy to me right. because I'm not here to say, you should use me because right. let me tell you about me. Right. Let me tell you why I'm the best no. and sell the most. And it says nothing like that. No. It says, hey, would you help me? Well, all of your marketing should be about them yes. and not about you. Yes. And that would be 
humble, humble, but his little That's knock so on sweet. the door. Did you get, do you know specifically of any business that came from you writing several. one of those letters? Yeah. Several. Yeah. Because I would get calls that so-and-so, uh-huh. I got your number from so-and-so. Yeah. And I knew that I had written. And you're like, oh, yes. yes. So it was, I have been lately getting referrals mm-hmm. from, they're like, um, Sally Jane told me to call you. And you're like, who's that? I'm, and I go, oh, <laughs> I just like, say, you're like, great, great, wonderful. Great. And then I'm like, who is Sally Jane? It was a referral of a referral. Yes. Yes. That is starting to happen. Yeah. Um, so things are just starting to happen yeah. with time. Oh, I've gotten referrals from like client leads, people who never bought anything, but we mm-hmm. had like a phone call mm-hmm. or a conversation or saw a house, but they never, it didn't work out. Or maybe... <laughs> My favorites are the ones that use another agent and still refer me. Yeah. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Okie dokie. I had a listing appointment this weekend, actually. And it was a really sweet man. He's going through a divorce. And he's trying to decide if he wants to buy out Mm -hmm. the wife and stay in the house, which has no benefit for me. Nope. Or should he sell? And he, you know, he was... um, a referral from someone that I kind of know, kind of don't, don't. Anyway, it was it was sort of a cold, yeah, intro, you did. right? Because I don't know him, yeah. Um, and he said, you know, I I'm just trying to really figure out what I'm gonna do. Like, what is the house worth as it is right now? I know if I want to sell it, I'm gonna have to um do some things, yeah. and then what would it be worth? And he said, so I'm kind of just looking for an honest opinion, but I know you're in the business of selling houses, and you're like, so oh, you're probably, no, sir, not me. You got yeah. the right one. And I said, look. I I have been very blessed in my business. You were like, I sell enough houses. <laughs> it's okay. I will sell yours, but yeah. I don't have to. That's, what, that's exactly what I said. I said, if you want to sell, I'd be happy to. And I said, I'm here to give you the information you need to make the decision that is best for you. Right. He said, well, how do I go about buying her out? So we talked about cash out HELOCs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you could tell he's just, I've lived here 40 years. Like, I it, don't even know what a fees worksheet. Right. I said, look, just whenever you get to that point, send me the fees worksheet. And he goes, even if you're not selling my house? Yeah, And man. I said, absolutely. And I said, now listen, if, because he was interviewing another agent. Oh. I said, now listen, if you hire the other agent. Don't, don't. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> to, to ask, and he, he laughed because I said it. Right. laughing like, like, like I said you know <laughs> <laughs> but really um, right but I said if you hire the other agent no but if you would like to interview me like I, I'm yeah. here to help you yeah you know and service he, he laughed and he said well I really appreciate right, that because he will refer you whether he sells yes. the house or not right yeah but I, I left that appointment it was on a Saturday I had to get someone to keep the kids Tanner was work it was it was hard to get there. Yeah. And I left there without a listing. He's yeah. He's still deciding. Right, right. But I just left there very happy. Yeah. To have helped. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because part of the fulfilling part of the career is actually helping people. Can you read the definition, Anthony's definition? You want to hear it again? I do. And then I'm going to read to you some other things. Okay. Okay. Anthony Iannarino. Okay. Okay. The word hustle means that you work hard. It means you work hard every single day. It means you do the things other people won't do, and you do them with a sense of joy and purpose because you love it. Oh, I do love it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's just the perfect description of that. Um, While you're pulling up what you're about to read, I have one more. Go, go. I can't wait. (laughs) That definition reminded me how he said, I work hard every single day. Yeah. I want to point out that on my days off of work, yeah, I am working to be a really good mom. Yeah. I am working to be a really good keeper of the home. Right. Like every day is work. Is work in some way. Yeah. Sure, I relax. But that's also just like a sense of purpose. Yes. It's a yes, sense of purpose when you work. And I went to a wedding several, several years ago. Okay. Me and Tanner were just dating. So okay. it was probably 11 years ago. Okay. And the best man... Um, stood up and gave a toast, and he said something that I have always remembered. Ooh. He he's he was married and had kids and was bit, kind of like giving advice. And he said, "My goal at the end of every day before I hit my pillow is that I don't have an ounce of energy left. Oh, that I have. He's given. leaving it all on the field. Yeah, he said <laughs> at the end of every day. Yeah, before I get in bed, I am okay to be." 
right at empty just in time to hit the sheets yeah. and go to bed and wake up totally refreshed. Yeah, do it again. Ready to do it again. Yep. He said, my goal is to give every ounce of energy that I am capable of giving every day to the people in my life, right. My whether it's your work, your family, your kids, your friends. Like, I don't want to go to bed with extra. Right. Like, I want every day to give it all I've got. And mm -hmm. when I wake up, I'm ready to do it again. Love and I was it. just like, oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Thought about it as like an actual level right. of energy. Like a tank. Yeah. Got to empty but the I really tank, liked it. Fill up the tank. Love mm -hmm. it. That's good. Would you like to hear what some of our listeners said? Yeah. So you asked them. So what did you I'll ask? tell you what I said. Um, I said, when you hear the phrase hustle humbly, what does it mean to you? Okay. Okay. These are great. Um well, the first one said, it is like ninja selling. <laughs> I'm like, well, kind of. Um, ninja selling? Yeah, you know, that's like whole book. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, ninja. like you're not selling, but you're serving. I don't know. I didn't read the whole book, but okay. I, I have the gist. All right. This one is work hard, but have boundaries and be the person you would want to work with. Yes, correct. Love it. Um, okay, let's see. This one says... <laughs> work hard but don't get a big head about it because there's always more to learn yeah yep good okay um i like that so many of them said work hard working really hard for what you want but doing it the right ethical way oh that's good that's Ethics. very good okay let's see um it is a reminder to work together for the same end goal rather than competing to win yeah okay um Okay, hold on. Someone um, on one of Haven's little TV shows that she was watching yeah. said that it is better to lose than to cheat. Fair. And I thought, that is the truth. That is the truth. Don't fudge your numbers and right. don't overpromise. Right. And, you know, just be it's you. okay. It's but okay. You have to stand confidently in you to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's hard. Here's another one. Working hard with others and embracing relationships with other agents so everyone wins. See, yeah. Okay. I need to be more compassionate to my to my struggling agents. There you go. Get your coin, sis, but help others in the process and don't walk over people in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's so good. Um, how about work hard, but be humble. Don't be arrogant. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. This one is... I have to pull them up because they're they get long. Get up, get the work done, grind, not braggy, not showy, doing it all from the heart. Beautiful. Make an impact without being a snob. <laughs> with with the um with the monkey covering its eyes. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> uh, okay. You're a good human who wants to do the best you can in your real estate practice. Sure. Good okay. human. Like that. Work hard and stay true to your why. Uh, okay, this one is not being an obnoxious jerk. <laughs> Working hard <laughs> while displaying humility, kindness, and thanks. Yeah. Okay. Work hard with integrity, efficiency, and poise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. This is a long one. Do it, but don't forget where you came from. Help others along the way. Yeah. There's what you want to focus yeah. on. Help others along the way. <laughs> um, podcast. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they put in. Just what podcast. What do you think of what do you think your of? hustle humbly? Podcast. The podcast. Uh, the next one. <laughs> Best podcast ever? Question oh, mark? Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's another. Here's another. They, they, got, they got jokes. Yeah. Uh, work hard to build a business about. Wait. Work hard to build a business other people rave about. Okay. Don't be cocky. Put others first. Love it. Okay. And I think there was one more in the DM because those were in the little box. This one was like, <laughs> I can't fit it in the DM. Oh. Um, work smarter to do right by your clients and build a better life for you and your family. The hustle typically associated with real estate is crap. All competition <laughs> and ego that serves no one. Yes. That is all truth. Right. I love all these answers. They were all good and perfect. Yeah, very spot on. Spot, what we were looking spot for. Spot on. So I think I think they've got it. Yes. My God, I think <laughs> they've got it. We're doing our job. I think they've got it. Okay. So are you ready for a toast? Is yeah. it toast time? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a clue what this is, but I'm gonna actually. I've been getting better about putting their location in here, but yeah. I didn't. It's okay. Oh no, I've got it. Okay. Oh, okay. This is from Amanda to Maria. Okay. So 
Amanda says, hi ladies, thanks so much for sharing your tricks of the trade with us. I'm a new agent in Atlanta, Georgia, and listening to your podcast has become a part of my weekly training and self-improvement. Mm. Perfect. I'd love to toast my friend and colleague, Maria Card. Maria and I started our real estate careers at the same time, and we were a little lost, but her positive attitude and go-getter personality has turned it into such a fun experience. Oh. Whether it's collaborating on marketing ideas, improving our systems, or writing an offer, she's my go-to gal. That's awesome. Maria makes me a better agent, and I'm so grateful to have found not only a wonderful colleague, but a lifelong friend. Love that. Love it. That is good. So cheers to Maria, and thank you to Amanda. And For giving us a toast. You guys get out there and hustle humbly. humbly. Go hustle humbly. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. Let us know who we should toast to for the next episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hustle Humbly Podcast. If you have an episode, topic, or question, please email us at hustlehumblypodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. See you next week. Bye. This is the good life.